Welcome, Welcome to the Enrique Pascal, Pascal Show. This is our first show of our second season, and I am super duper excited. Today's show topic is love lessons. You can, you can tell my wife is with me. We have two awesome, awesome couples, couples here. And, and uh, first, first and foremost, we want to uh, have, have both these couples introduce themselves, and then after that, we can get into our, 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 our topic, topic of discussion. All right. All right. Now, now listen, guys, guys we, want we want you to share this, this because, because we learned, we learned something, something new today. today. All, all three, three of us here, all three couples, we have 36 years of marriage. 36 years. Now watch this, guys. Something so amazing. This couple here that have been 12, 12 years this, this year. year. Mm -hmm. Us, the Pascals, 12, 12 years this year. And, and the Dados, 12 years this year. year. Now, now listen, listen, guys, I don't, I don't know about, about you, you, but that, that is, is not, not an accident. accident. <laughs> 12, <laughs> 12 years. years. So now we, we have 36 years of experience. Mm -hmm. we, got we got some stuff we're going to share. Yes. Love, Love lessons. Love right? lessons. So, so look, first and foremost, you guys, go ahead and introduce yourselves to the people, please. Well, good evening. Uh, my name is Breon Hamlet. This is my lovely wife, Naya Hamlet. As you just heard, we've been married for 12 years. Uh, ups and downs, we're going to talk all about that tonight. Uh, but we just want to keep it real, excited about the conversation tonight. All right. All right. All right. Awesome. Right. Pass it over to the battles, please. My name is Mario Battles. My lovely wife, Terry. Yes, she is. We have also been married for 12 years and excited about the show tonight as well. All right. So now, basically tonight, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about everything. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to post it right here, and we're gonna answer it, right? Let's start. Marriage is, it's a job. Yeah. And, and the reason why marriage is a job is, I heard someone say that marriage don't take work, and I don't know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who that brother was. <laughs> I, don't know that. I don't know, I don't know this brother, but you know, Marriage is a job, and, and the reason why marriage is a job is because we have two imperfect people yeah. trying to love each other perfectly. Right. Mm -hmm. We have different ways of thinking, right? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Different yeah. upbringings, mm -hmm. yeah. different principles, mm -hmm. and God has a sense of humor to put two people <laughs> <laughs> that have nothing in common and say, work it out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What sparked this right here was some, some weeks ago, my wife and I had an argument. Be transparent. We had an argument. I was in, a, in the bathroom shaving, and she was talking to me, and I wasn't in, I wasn't in the best space that day, to be, to, be, to be honest. And I said, leave me alone for a moment. <laughs> I told her, Mario, I told her, leave me alone for a moment. Bri come on now. I told her, leave me alone. Yeah, but you didn't say it that nice. I didn't know. Yeah, you, no. said, you said leave me alone for a moment, but it wasn't like that. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad right now. <laughs> you don't get me mad now. I can, I can go back there. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> now, now, listen. Now, you go ahead. So, what did you say? No, you know what? What no, were we what, arguing about? I don't remember. Yeah, I but don't I remember said leave me alone for a moment. So, but, and what did you say? But anyway, let me just say this. Because we're married, I already knew that you were on one. Okay, right. so when that's the case, I just go to my corner. I stay out of your way. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't even remember. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna remind you. But you said you said you did say you said Trina, just leave me alone for, for a moment. For a moment. And I was like, I'm gonna leave you alone for two, two moments. moments. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, hey, all the time you need, you know, just don't bring me that way you keep carrying. Like right, Brian. right. Okay. So your, she came back quick on the draw yes. and said, I'm going to leave you alone for two moments. Two moments. And jumped in the shower. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'm over here and I'm saying, no, she didn't come back so quick and so strong mm -hmm. and so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what I did was, I did what any good man should have done. Mm -hmm. I jumped in the shower with her. Yes. <laughs> yes. There you go. Yeah, right. Right. He, jumped, he did. He yeah. jumped in the shower. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying to myself, I'm like, this McRo is out of his mind. I'm like, who told him? You just finished telling me to leave you alone, but it did soften my heart. But but here's yeah. the thing. So when I so when I jumped in the shower, she said, "What you doing here?" I said, "Girl, turn around. I'm scrubbing your back." <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. You did. And it softened the blow. It softened the blow. I want to get in your mix right now. Right. Tell me about something that you guys had. One of y'all picked this mic up. Right. Tell me about, it. Tell me about the disagreement y'all had and how you solved it. Because we solved it to me jumping in the shower, scrubbing her back. 
what, what, what's going on? One of y'all. Um, with us, you know, I think sometimes we just give each other that space mm -hmm. that we need, mm -hmm. um, that she may need and that I may need to allow the uh, emotions and everything mm -hmm. to calm down a little bit mm -hmm. before we um, start back up right. again. You know, um, that's you know one of the ways space? that we right space. right that we handle it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. space. yeah, but not too much, not too long of a space, but right. enough time to allow each other to think about process what we were arguing about. Okay, mm -hmm. um, what could uh, for myself. What can I do now after the argument has already taken place? What can I do to bring us back together and at least start conversating mm -hmm. on um, what happened and what to do now right. to, to get you back to a right. good place? Mm -hmm. Right. Now right. let me ask right. you a question, Mario. That's that's good. We mm -hmm. do the same thing. That works for us. But do you <coughs> find that the more that you and Terry do that, it becomes easier? Because you know, mm -hmm. as Christian, we need to be quick to forgive. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. being in a relationship with your spouse and being a Christian, you get all the practice there. Right. <laughs> Am I correct? All all the yes. 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 I mean, yes. you get yes. all the practice all you the need practice. there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you need there. Yeah. So, okay, so I pose that question to both of you guys. So, do you find that the more you, you resolve conflict better, is it easier for you to come back to the table and say, hey, I'm sorry, Maya. I'm sorry, Terry. That depends what day you want to <laughs> select. <laughs> let's right. let's right. just be real here. We say we're going right. to keep it 100. Let's you know, that's, that's, right. that's the day that you select. It depends what has been going on throughout the day. We right. always had this analogy that we use that women are spaghetti yeah. and men are waffles. Mm -hmm. uh oh. And meaning that we're compartmentalized. <laughs> we can move on from different subjects. Right. Uh, and we could have had a horrible day at work, right. get home, right. ready to move forward. But if she had a terrible day, oh, yeah. you know, it's like get out of her way. Yeah. It, it's yeah. everything's yeah. mixed in. So <laughs> it could be a simple, hey, baby, what are we eating tonight? Right. What do you mean what we <laughs> eating tonight? Right. You know, then you figure that out. I, I don't figure out everything today right. at work. I always, I got to come home and do that too. Yeah. Like, hold on. Right. Hold up, hold up. Back up for a right. second. You know what I mean? What's going down? And so uh, if, if we keep it at 100, right. sometimes I'm not able to navigate back to a calm place to right. be like, well, hold on now. Why you get the 100 already? I mean, we, we, I'll just ask you what we're going to eat, you know? Uh, and so we call it in our household intense moments of fellowship. Okay. No. Wow. That's right. Press here. Y'all press here right now. Share this right now. It's intense moments of fellowship because I am the one usually that's trying to bring us back to a level ground. You are the one. That I'm the one always. Like there is, she wants to sleep on it. Okay. She wants to sleep on it, and I'm and I, I'm the one going to bring in the scripture. You know, we're not supposed to go to bed. You bring in the scripture, <laughs> right? Right. You know, I want to, you know, I want to throw that in the atmosphere. That sometimes that works. Yes. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. Right. right. But as, as you stated, as time has gone on, we've learned how to pick our battles. Right. right. We right. learn how to pick yeah. our battle. Yeah. So as you y'all went through, we're able to read each other a little bit more. We're like, you know what? I might need to let her sleep yeah. on this one yeah. tonight because this is not going to end well with us. You know? Right, right, right. Who, who is the strong one between between you and I? Me? Yes. yes. Who's the strong one between us here? Hey, can I tell you who the strong one is? I know you would say me. <laughs> I know you would say me, but I just differ. I just don't know. I really, that's, that's a hard decision for me to make because we both are very strong people. Right, but who's the peacemaker, though? Because he's the peacemaker. We, we already got that established. Yeah. Who's the peacemaker here? You know here? what? We have, we have traded positions on that because mm -hmm. it used yeah. to it yeah. used to be right. th that I was the peacemaker. And okay. As time mm -hmm. has gone mm -hmm. on, resolution of conflict, mm -hmm. of spiritual growth, yeah. I feel like you are more so <laughs> the peacemaker now. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Believe that? Come but on. that's because okay. I set the example. Okay, okay. that's right. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> who, the, who the peacemaker over there, man? I want to say um, I am. Um, not all the time. Not all the time. A lot of time. The majority of the times, I want to say that you know, I still give her a space, but then I'll come back and say, "Yeah, I, you know, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about it." Or um, her <laughs> sometimes uh, bringing something in the room uh, 
as a peace offering. That's what she would say. Oh, she'll bring something. She'll bring, yeah, right. She'll say, you know, here's a peace offering. You know. Oh, um, wow. Well, that's nice. And, and yeah. I sometimes like I don't want the peace offering. You know I'm I be like, I'm, 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 I'm oh. still mad. Oh. You know what the peace offering is. Yeah. 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 Hold up, hold up. That, that. My, my, my pain okay. said, hold up, hold up. Can't hear Trina. The, the, okay, so the, the mic is low. The okay, mic is low. Right. The mic is low. Okay. All right. So can we pick up on Trina? Cause they they say uh, the mic is low. Can't hear Trina. Okay. We we want to make sure we can hear Trina. Yeah. Is that? She was. Hello. Can you hear me now, Mark? <laughs> Mark, are we better here? Are we better? Are we better here? Are we better? Is the mic is the mic better? Somebody talk to us out there. Let us know. Come on now. Can y'all hear us? Hello, hello. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? The camera's not even coming up. <laughs> we want to laugh too. Oh, <laughs> okay, we can't. I'll grab the mic. Yeah, okay. I'll grab the mic. Still low. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. okay. Ask so him to bring the mic closer. For you to bring the mic closer, Mario. He can't hear you. Bring, okay. Bring it's it still low. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now, Mark? Can you hear us now? Just, just a, little. a little? Okay. Just a little. Can't hear mic- y'all clear. Okay. Her mic. We were, we're we working on it. All right. It's better, but the sound quality is not that good. Okay. Uh-huh. Give us a second. Samaya so Charles is saying yes. Still low, my brother. How about Enrique's can, mic? Is Enrique? You said much better. Yeah, okay, much yes, better. Yes, much better. Much okay. Better. All okay. Right. Much okay. better. All right. Let's all segue okay. into this. No, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna my yeah, let's okay. segue into this. <laughs> okay. All right. When 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 you are when we when you are in a relationship, the most dangerous place to be is in your feelings. Mm-hmm. When you are in a relationship, the most dangerous place to be is in your feelings because feelings change, mm-hmm. right? Feelings go up, feelings go down, mm-hmm. and if you make a decision to do something based on feelings, you can really mess something up, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. What do you do? To stay out of your feelings, how do you? How do we? How do we stay out of our feelings? And who's the emotional one here? Like, you know, who's the emotional one? Because I want to talk to that person, the one who's emotional, right? I want to talk. I want to talk to you with your emotional self. Come on, Mrs. Battle. Come on, give give it to her. She raised her hand. Hold up. Wait a minute. She raised her hand. No attack. No attack. attack. With your emotional self. I am the emotional one. Yes. Go ahead. Feelings are very strong about what I'm trying to express myself. Mm-hmm. And when I feel like I'm not getting my point across, mm-hmm. that angers me mm-hmm. or it, it makes me feel like what I have to say is not important. Mm-hmm. So I don't like to be shut down mm-hmm. because it, that what really makes it intense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say I'm emotional, but I'm learning now to not let my emotions stop me from doing what I know is right. Mm-hmm. For my husband, yeah. right. because one thing I've heard you say one time, I try to look at him like that's God standing before me. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm being honest now right. to try to be like, okay, don't let your emotions take over so much that you don't do the things that you need to do, mm-hmm. or you know, just you're not honoring, not right. You right. want to honor your right. husband, so mm-hmm. I would say I've learned a lot about it by definitely thinking about. My actions too, mm-hmm. of what I may do because I'm so mad. Mm-hmm. I don't want to keep that anger or that um, just that that wrath or anything between us. So mm-hmm. right. that's why I do bring peace offerings, and I'm like, okay, I was wrong. Right. I'm learning to say that more now. Mm-hmm. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, to try to break the ice and right. get back to the place that we was before. Okay. All right, so Mrs. Pascal, working. how do you how do you stay out of your feelings? <laughs> um, how do I stay out of my feelings? It's hard for me. It really is hard for me to stay out of my feelings because I'm a passionate person. You know, so like Sarah says, she's emotional. I'm a passionate person, but I am a my my strength and my passion sometimes can get in my way. You know, so I'm learning how to balance it out. You see what I'm saying? Because right. I believe in a relationship that is 
you're going to get angry. You know, there's no way around that. But you have to learn how to control it. You know, and I think I'm better because, you know, we've been together 12 years now. So we've had, you know, some issues to work out. Married for 12 years. Yes, married 12. Yeah, longer than that. But married, yeah, married, meaning legit. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? (laughs) Legit for 12 years. So we've had some time to, you know, work on our issues. And so I do think that I'm getting better, even though I am still strong. And I can get upset because I think (laughs) not too long ago we had a heated moment. And we were just sitting on the bed talking, Naya. And um, I looked at him and I was like, (laughs) I want to go upside your head right now. like he was looking like he was scared like where's the door and I was like no you gonna sit here you gonna listen to what I gotta say Negro. I am scared right so you know but guess what and Enrique can say that I will come back very quickly right yes. and make it right yes I'll be like you know because the Holy Spirit convicts me yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. so and I do want to honor him I, you mm-hmm. know I don't care how mad he makes me but I always I'm quick to come back and say you know what I was wrong I'm sorry right. you know I apologize now I, I'm like nah yeah sometimes it does take me a night on the couch because I feel like that's punishment. Because I know he wants to feel my warm body. And For that's who? not often. That's not often. But sometimes I'm like, look, I, you need your space in a marriage sometimes. And the, and the, and the sofa can be comfortable some nights. Because I'm like, ooh, this bed is cold. <laughs> I'm not sleeping here tonight. And then in the morning, in the morning when you get up, you walk past him, you're like, let's <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Fresh shit. Y'all share this. Yes, yes. How, how do you stay out of your feelings? Y'all, you guys share this right now. Go ahead and share this. Share this. Well, first I want to say, because we're talking about love lessons, Terry, thank you for what you just said, because I tend not to be the emotional one, number one. Okay. But so Terry said she needs to not allow her emotions to get in the way of giving her husband what he needs or get in the way of that, right? For me, I think is I need not for my strength to get in the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me to stay out of my emotions, I'm a journaler. So okay. um, some people have their quiet space and, you know, I have my prayer closet and all that, but the kids will be knocking at the door. So that doesn't always work. Um, but I journal and I always feel like God gives me something to come back to him and either apologize for or to say this is something I think we need to work through. Um, one of the things we're big on, though, is knowing that everything is a process and yeah. it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. So he does give me that space. Okay. Um, but for me, I I've learned. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're still learning. He is still learning. Yeah. Yeah. But I definitely, I have to write it down, get it out, whether it comes out through the tears, but it also comes out through writing for me. Yeah. Through writing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Um, Emotions, and this somebody may hear this and say he's talking crazy, but emotions should not be in a marriage. Emotions should not be in a marriage. Because our Lord and Savior is going to marry us one day. And not one time is he emotional when it comes to us. Not one time. If Jesus was emotional when it came to us, we we would be in trouble. Right? Because when, when we love based on emotions, then we're loving based on conditions. Yes. Right? We're ba- and, and then everything becomes performance-based at that point. Mm-hmm. I got to perform to win you over. Yes. <laughs> you yes. know? You, I got to perform to do this. I got to perform to do that. Mm-hmm. So, in all reality, there, there, is, there is two songs that I talk about when I talk about love in the relationship. The most famous love song is Tina Turner, mm-hmm. when she asked the question, what's love got to do with it? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. But love has everything to do with it because God is love. Mm -hmm. And the second song that I think is the most amazing song in all the world is Anita Baker. Mm -hmm. She says, I love you just because. I love you just because. Just because I do. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice in that song, she never gave you a reason why she loved you. It was just because. And that's how we're supposed to be in a marriage. Because if you have emotions in it, the marriage is no longer functioning the way it's supposed to. 
right? So that's one of the things. Now, I wanted to segue into, into this right here because this is one of the, uh, the questions that I have. What does winning an argument look like? What does it look like to win an argument? Who, who wants to answer that? What does it look like to win an argument? When you guys are arguing, when you guys are arguing, how do you guys win an argument? What does it look like to win an argument? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it then comes back to the context of what's happening in that argument, right? You know, what, what are we actually having a discussion about? And so is, is it about children? Is it about job? What is, what is it that we're not coming into agreement about that we feel now that could be measured at the end of this that we've got to a successful victory from it? So um, we, we're, we're, we're busy individuals. We, we're constantly on the travel. I'm, I'm a pastor. Uh, my wife's um, in high in education. She does some things in the community. We have several movements happening. And one of the arguments that actually all, always comes up in our household is you're doing too much. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. And, so, <laughs> and so a way that we get a chance is just to say that we measure that. Me, I've learned as a husband how to die. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Okay? That's right. That's how, right. how to die to some of my ambitions that I have out there that I see that's happening, that I'm getting influence in, that's taking place, and it's evident that it's happening. My wife can see it. Children can see it and everything. But how am I dying? And that's a, a, a successful way for that to actually take place is her to actually see. To see you You guys. know what? You made a decision to make sure that you were first, that she was first. And that's a measurement that now we can now see, and she can go back and say, you know what, bro? You know, that was a form of dying Wow! because she brought an issue to me. Mm-hmm. It was an issue when we talked about it. Wow. But once I had a quiet moment, I was able to come and say and make the necessary arrangements in order for that win to take place. Wow. Go, go, ahead, go, ahead, okay. go ahead and press here. <laughs> press here. Press here right now. Because, because I'm, I'm going to pass it over. Press here right now. You've got to see this. When, you're, when, when he's dying and you are in your feelings, do you crucify him again mm. while he's in a death position? Yes. Or do you resurrect him while he's dying? Yes. Lord God Almighty, I yeah, feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Press here right now. Yeah. Press here right now. That is a good question. And as he was talking, all I could hear in my head and what I was saying out loud was he does that consistently. Um, and I do, it, it convicts me. Um, I then come back to him, and that's what helps me mm. to, you know, put my hand on his back and say, I got you. Um, but because he consistently models that for me, it actually encourages me to do the same because I'm often the one in that emotionless state. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's almost like he, as Trina was saying, she sets that model for you sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. He consistently models that for me, and then I encourage him, lift him up, and then it, it, it encourages me to do some of the same. Awesome. Yeah. So you so basically you resurrect him as well. Absolutely. You resurrect him when he's yeah. dying. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. What does what does what does what does that look to you? Winning winning okay. an argument. What does that look like to you? Well to win an argument. Actually, you know what? I would rather not win an argument and because I you know, in a perfect world I wouldn't argue with you, period. Mm-hmm. But I don't I you know, I always tell you, um, I'm not focused on winning. You sure. see what I'm saying? Because if you lose, then I lose. We all lose. Absolutely. So I, I really, you know, I don't ever, ever, ever want to argue with you, period, and definitely not win it. But I, I get a different perspective with what Bree and Naya are saying. Sure. So I, I get that. I can use that also because we do know we are going to argue. Right. Yeah, it's impossible not to. Right. Two different people, two different wills, right. two different um, mindsets. Right. I, we don't think alike. God didn't, he didn't create us that way. Sure. You see what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, when we do argue, I don't feel like I can win right. because I never want to do anything to hurt you. And an argument hurts right. yeah. because that means that you are now in conflict with one another. Right. Now, now, let me say this, too. You can argue. You can argue without the foul words. Right. You can argue without raising your voice. Yeah. See, at that point, you're not arguing. At that point, you're being disrespectful right. because you can argue speaking just like this. Mm-hmm. And sharing points with each other. You don't have to raise your voice. You don't have to curse at each other. 
You don't have to come out your mouth and call me out my name. Because at that point, you are abusing me. That's not arguing. Because when you argue with your mate, ultimately what you want to do is resolve the issue. Right? You want to resolve the issue because if you don't resolve the issue, now you have a teammate or a partner that you can't take advantage of having that partnership. So arguing is fine. Like you said, we're going to have that. But the question is, what does it look like? Is it you this, you that, and throwing things? See, that's not arguing. That's abuse. What does arguing look like to you guys? What does it look like to you guys? Um, winning. winning an argument. I'm sorry. Winning an argument. Thank you. Well, honestly, sometimes, um, again, depends on what the argument may have been. Honestly, um, sometimes I do want to feel that she got the point of how um, where the disagreement may have started and again she has her opinion I have mine but to come to an agreement or to her to understand my opinion of it um, sometimes it does feel good to me because now I'm saying or I feel like she un she's she's understanding me a little bit more mm -hmm. um, than she did before yes. you know so it, it's 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 growing that's a, a winning to argue and for us, right, it's, it's like a win because now she understands me, you know, um, and I understand her. So you learn from that. Learn from right. after the argument, you know, that, okay, this is how she, um, this was her thought pattern on what just took place. Right. You know, this was my thought pattern on what took place because we, again, like you said, we, two different people, two different upbringings and, and the way that I made see something that's totally different in the way that she saw it. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, when sometimes brings us even closer together right. in my eyes. Right. You know? I got yeah, you. I, like you yeah. I got you. Yeah. Right. So, so winning an argument looks like this. It looks like this when, when respect is still present. Yeah. Yeah. When love does not leave the building. Mm -hmm. That's when you win the argument. Mm -hmm. Because both people are not offended and both people are heard, understood, and respected. Mm -hmm. Now, let's think about football for a second. When you think about football, we have the offense side and the defense side, mm -hmm. okay? When you are having arguments, what needs to happen is both parties need to play defense. Mm -hmm. But the reason why arguments blow up is we have one person playing offense mm -hmm. and one person playing defense. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have one person playing offense, and one person playing defense, that means you both are pointing in the opposite direction. And the Bible tells us, how can two walk together, come on now, unless they be in agreement, right? So in order to win an argument, we have to have both parties facing the same direction, which means you're playing defense. Now, when you're playing defense, you're not defending the argument, you're not defending the conversation. I am defending your heart. I am defending your heart, and, 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 and I need you to do the same for me. Yes. Because when you defend my heart, mm -hmm. and I defend your heart, now we both go, are, are going to score and win. Yes. We're going yes. to both end up in the field, you know, in, in the end zone, rather, right. and doing our dance, throwing the football and all, because we both scored. Right. Yes. Right. You see? So yes. that's what it's supposed to be. Defense. Defense wins championships. Defense wins championships. So it's very important that we become defense-minded or defense-oriented when an argument shows up. One of the most important things in a relationship is communication. One of the most important things in a marriage is communication. People have to always communicate when you are in a marriage because the first time the first marriage went to went to, uh, messed up, shambles, was when Adam and Eve was no longer communicating. Mm -hmm. It shows that when you and your wife or you and your husband are not speaking, the serpent is speaking to your mate. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do you keep the serpent out of your marriage based on communication? Because communication is very important because nothing, nothing gets built. There is no construction where communication isn't. We know that based on uh, the Bible, the Tower of Babel. We have these men building a tower, and the tower stopped being built because of one reason. 
they stop speaking the same language. So the enemy knows that if I can confuse his language and confuse her language, they can't construct any longer. How does it come to the point where you guys are always speaking the same language, where you're not speaking French and you're speaking Dutch? <laughs> I say, I'm going to start and then I'm going to hand it off to you because I already know where you're going with this. And he didn't even say anything. <laughs> I already know where you're going with this. For us, one of the things we try to do is not to allow our baggage to come into our communication or our mode of communication. So, for example, and we use this example often, um, I've had what we call daddy issues. So it could be something very simple that we're communicating about or he has asked me to do and I might say, or I used to, I don't do it anymore. You're not, <laughs> you ain't my daddy. You ain't my daddy. Hold on, right? you told her you ain't my daddy. Yeah, you're not my father. Who are you talking to like that? Are, are y'all okay? are y'all related? <laughs> are you guys? Is, is, is this is, is this your cousin? <laughs> so because of those daddy issues, which we know in our marriage is one of my pieces of baggage, when we communicate, I try to be cognizant of that baggage and not bring that into our communication. But another thing that we do, and, and Enrique, you just said something that's real, and that's real and live in our marriage. When we are looking, um, if we're looking at each other, we're on offense and defense. Right. But I'm going to hand it to him because he's going to tell you <laughs> <laughs> where we need to look. And I, Was that where you were going? I'm going there, there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is where I was going. I'm going to go ahead and give her, give, give, give me some points right there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And so um, one of the analogies that we learned, and this actually came from our, uh, our uncle um, some time ago when we were in a rough, very rough patch in our relationship, which was a triangle. And it's exactly the same analogy. I never heard it spoken the way that you did. But what it was is what she stated. On the bottom of the triangle, you have, you have three different angles. On one side of the angle, on the bottom of the triangle was Naya. I was on the other side of the triangle, which was my name is Brian. And what we were taught is we're always looking at each other and our issues that way. Mm. But at the top of this triangle was God. Mm. Oh, wow. And so until we built a understanding and a communication system where we knew who, what, who God was in our lives personally and what God was trying to say to us about her, where she was and her heart issue or what was going on at that particular time, until we built that in our relationship, we were always at heads because I had one way of thinking how this is supposed to work out. And she had one way of thinking how it was supposed to work out. And the craziest thing that we do, God is the author of relationships. Yes, he is. And so why is it that we don't go to God and yeah. say, God, what is it that she's thinking? Why is she coming at me like this? Why, why is this going on? And I can tell you from practice and still to this day. When we built that in our relationships, that's when our communication that's began it. to get effective yeah, because yeah. God would begin to reveal things that she was dealing with that I otherwise would have never known and would have never thought of wow. and would have been like, oh, that's why yeah. she's coming at me that way. So I need to be better in my approach. My tone needs to be different yeah. when I approach her. My body language needs to be different yeah. when I approach her because some of these things that I'm coming at her with is reminding her of some of her baggage. Yeah. That's it. Fresh air right now. Good information. My goodness. Wow. Come on, man. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's talk about communication, man. Really important. The word, the word of God. That's how we stay or not allow the enemy to come into um, or to approach her or myself. You know, constantly um, bringing the word to the forefront of whenever we have a disagreement or um, time being separated for the enemy to try to come in and talk to her or even talk to myself, mm -hmm. you know, um, the same way as doubt come by hearing, faith come by hearing. So I, I constantly, and she does it also, bring the word in. Mm -hmm. And not in a way to uh, chastise her or myself mm -hmm. when she does it or when I do it, because sometimes people can use the word yeah. 
against a person, yeah. you know, and, and it shouldn't be done. It should, it's, it's for correcting, teaching, helping, That's right. learn and build That's up, right. up, lift someone up, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it's, you know, something may happen and, and immediately I will pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to me what I need to say this scripture, mm -hmm. not Mario, right. because she could be mad at Mario and I don't want her to, to I don't want her to feel that this is coming from Mario because she's not going to be able to receive it because but when I give her the word yeah. mm -hmm. it's easy for her to that's right wow this this yeah. is the word this is not Mario this right. is mm -hmm. the word of God right and we can build on that to stop the enemy from coming and speaking to her or myself right and that you know why that's key the, the reason the, the reason the reason why that's key is when you give your mate the word mm -hmm. you're giving them Jesus yes. yeah. Now, now watch this though. You can reject me, but you would not reject Jesus. <laughs> when he show up, there is no rejection of the Lord. The Bible says that Jesus is the word that became flesh and they what? Dwelled among us. So when you bring the word into that marriage, you, bring it, you are bringing the rhema, you're bringing the flesh to dwell in your situation. You see? So that's why it's so important to bring the word in it because at that point you remove yourself and allow God to go into that heart of stone mm -hmm. and start to perform surgery yeah. on that thing. And remove those things yeah. that should not be there. Yeah. yeah. Communication. Yes. Talk to me, baby. But yeah, and that's true. And you know, I'm going to tell you, and I know Terry and Naya agree also, it is so good to be able to be in a marriage and be vulnerable mm -hmm. and transparent. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, when he brings the word to me in an argument, I don't want to carry it anymore. Yeah. I'm not trying to hold on to it. It's okay because I know Enrique loves me. Yeah. So it's like, it just softens my heart. And I'm like, okay, this is my husband. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But when the Holy Spirit is present, I can really hear what he's saying to me. Mm -hmm. See, I can't hear it when it's a lot of confusion going on mm -hmm. because the enemy is present. Mm -hmm. But when the Holy Spirit steps in, I can really hear his heart. And then I'm okay with being vulnerable. Because yeah. I'm like, you know what? This man is serious. This is a man of God. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't hurt you, Trina. Yeah. Listen, forget about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and that's because of the relationship that we have with Christ. Mm -hmm. Because everybody that says God, God, they don't mean that. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Wow. But we really have a relationship and a reverence for God to want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's what keeps us connected. You right. see what I'm saying? Because right. we do know this. We know that trouble is going to come. Mm -hmm. But he's our hope and glory yes, in everything. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I just, I'm listening to Bree and Mario, and I'm saying, you know, it's a gift to be able to be in a marriage and be able to be everything to your husband. Right. Because you know that your husband is not going to hurt you. Right. Because like you said, I also, you know, my father died when I was young. So, you know, I, yeah, of course I had daddy issues. But when, and I'm used to saying that now, nah, you're like, you, you're not my dad. My father is dead, bro. <laughs> Don't even try it. But now I got this man of God and he is serious about his relationship. Man, I don't care. I don't, when was the last time you heard me say you not my daddy? <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute because I trust him. Yeah. I trust him with my heart, man. Yeah. But I trust God first. Yeah. yeah. You know, I trust God first. Yes. So there is danger, though, when we don't recognize the gift that we have in our man or in our marriage. Wow. Come on. Um, Come and, on. and you just said something about there are times when we um, profess to be Christians and we might not be really living that out. Mm -hmm. I can tell you firsthand, I prayed and prayed and prayed to God to change his heart. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I was praying for a pastor. Right. Right. So I tell the story that I went to bed one night and my husband was smoking weed and doing everything you else. smoking weed. <laughs> I'm you smoking weed. We keeping it, we keep it at 100. We keeping it at 100. Of course we are. I went to bed. I went to bed getting a contact from him smoking. I, I woke up. Hold up. You know what, though? You know what, though? When I saw you, I said, he a weed smoker. I've been set free since 2007. 
<laughs> but I tell you, I woke up the next morning. I no lie, y'all. And overnight, I feel like I woke up to a brand new creation. Praise God. But I didn't recognize that gift. Mm. It took me a good, honestly, three years to fall back in love or to fall in love with the new creation. So I didn't recognize that gift. And like I said, I was praying to God for to change his heart. But I wasn't appreciative of the change that came. Wow. So as he showered me with love and showered me with the word, I wasn't appreciative of it. And so I would, um, I would actually tell him, look, don't combat me with the word, right? right? Yeah. Or I don't want, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> he would, he would come, he would come back, come home from divinity school and want to talk about all this stuff. And I'd be like, look, you, what you need to do is wash these bottles. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. So I just want to say to the women or men out there who aren't appreciative of the gift that they have in their relationship. Yes when they are being showered with the word mm. that there is danger in not being appreciative of that. That yes, is so powerful. Absolutely. When, when it comes to, to communication, I want to say something really profound guys. And you guys, I want you guys to share this right now because I'm about to give you some revelation wisdom. Matter of fact, those who know me, I need to see hashtag wisdom right now. Somebody give me that before I go slam off up in here. <laughs> Somebody, Mark, somebody, give me hashtag wisdom. I'm not going to say a word until I see hashtag wisdom. Nina, where you at? You know, Nina, I got to see hashtag wisdom. I'm not going to say a word until I see it. All right. I'm, I'm going to be on pause for a minute. Give me my hashtag. Is it on there? Is it up there? Look, it's a little delay. I'm going to go into it anyway because I know it's coming. Mark, I know Mark got me. You are, you are one conversation away in your relationship from experiencing heaven or hell in your relationship thank you I appreciate that Keisha I love you girl there was Jesus on the cross and there was two thieves one to the left and one to the right I feel my help y'all I feel the Holy Ghost I feel the Holy Ghost and when the thief to the left Bree began to marry or mock Jesus the one to the right said, what you talking about, man? How you going to mock this man? He ain't do nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. Jesus, with all this pain, all he going through, the abuse, forgets about the pain and the abuse and looks over to the thief on the right. And the man asked him one profound question. He says, Master, when you go to heaven, can I go with you? And Jesus said, today. Lord God Almighty, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year. He said, today, glory to God, when I go to paradise, you're going with me. Now watch this, though. The thief to the left heard the promise, heard the conversation, and did not change what he was saying. He was a fool. That one conversation had one man go to heaven, another man go to hell. Lord God Almighty. Can I preach it? Lord God. Boy, look, I'm, I'm about to run. Glory to God. I'm telling you that when you are in a relationship, you are one conversation away from introducing heaven or hell into your relationship. And if you don't know how to talk, you're going to introduce hell into your relationship. Lord God Almighty. It, isn't, that, isn't that something? Lord God, it takes a level of trust mm -hmm. to function in a relationship. So much so that God says in Proverbs 3 and 5 and 6, trust in you how much of your heart? Oh. All of, see, all your heart. Oh. See, now, let me ask you guys a question. Trust is the most important thing in a relationship. Agree? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Not love. Because not, I, can, I can love you and not trust you. I can love you and not trust you. Now say it this way. Love is the engine of a relationship. However, that engine needs some kind of fuel. And trust is the fuel of the relationship. What do you do to institute a high level of trust in your marriage to keep it going, to keep it from going into bankruptcy? Because a lot of people make withdrawals, man. 
and they do not make deposits. Lord God, I'm going to pass it over before I start speaking. <laughs> Yes, sir. You going in it right there? Yes, it is. It's 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 very good. It's very good. It's very good. Trust, right now. Trust, trust is is something that you have to earn. And I I want to go back to the place where she, where she was when she stated that she had to fall in love with me again because I was one man living and going into the marriage. We were married two years actually, and before I found God, I thought I knew God, but I didn't know God for real. I was a good praying brother. I never read his word. So once that shift happened for me, she had to fall back in love. She had to learn how to trust me again. And, 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 and from that, it took me three years, as she stated, to win her back. My goodness. She, listen to this lady, this beautiful, wonderful <laughs> lady that you see right here. All right. She wanted a divorce. Wow. She did not want to be with me anymore. Mm. She, she tried to find every, every angle she could to get way. out. She was picking. Hear this. We're going to keep it 100. Yes, was, we went to church. She was looking for other women at church <laughs> for me. Are you serious? <laughs> for real? Okay. Okay. So, so, so we had, I had to earn my stripes, y'all. Okay. This, is, this wasn't overnight. She was literally looking for other women because she had been broken. I mishandled her trust. So emotionally, I didn't know how to care for her because I didn't know how God wanted me to care for her as a man. I thought trust equated to equation of money. So as long as she had the bills paid, as long as she got the things that she was requesting, then the trust was built. And I didn't know how to love her the way. And so the trust had to be built for me now actually being present in the relationship. Actually putting her first in my life, meaning that other things, jobs and all that stuff that I was pursuing at the time, she had to learn right. that, hey, I trust this man because he's willing to lie. It's going it's to always come back to dying, fellas. Yeah. I had to learn how to do that because that's when the trust started to be built. And over time, it was not an overnight process. And to this day, trust is built in our relationship because now, look, we're real. We have calendars. We're able to now know I check in. Yeah, I do it. That's right. I check in That's right. with my wife because, you know, I don't have to. I want to put it out there, but I do it because I love her. And I do actively want to know what's going on with your day. How are you doing? How can I serve you? How, what's going on? Can we have a conversation? Are you in a different place right there? So those trust issues are built. They're, they're deflated because if I don't give it to her, guess what? Another brother going to step in. <laughs> sure. All right, to do what I'm not taking care of business doing. Yeah. So, so it's, 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 it's not a, it's, I always tell people all the time, relationships is the hardest thing that you're going to do in life. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. And it's, trust is not something that you just earn and say, I got that badge. Yeah. It is an ongoing thing that we do in our household and we try to teach others to do. It, 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 take, it takes constant deposits. Yeah. Constant, constant deposit. Constant. You can never deposit enough in a marriage. You can never deposit enough in a marriage. It takes constant deposits every single day. Because when things happen, you got to have enough equity in that thing to sustain it. The reason why divorce happens in a marriage is because there's no equity. Where, where, and where there's no equity, there's bankrupt. And, you, and, and when you're bankrupt, you're going to need a stimulus package. Come on now. And, and if you don't have a stimulus package, you're in a world of trouble. You see, so that's the reason why making constant deposits are important. When was the last time you made a deposit in your situation? I mean, a real good one. Talk to me about a good deposit you made for that man with your quiet self. <laughs> make a deposit. I try to make deposits all the time because I want it's, it's reciprocal. You right. want, I, you know, you want to respect your your loved one, your husband, your, your significant other. So every day I try to do something nice for him to let him know that I love him, I care about him. I, you know, I want him to be the best man that he can be. You know, and I want him to know that I'm his support system, like I'm with him. Like they say, I'm a ride or die, ride or die. I'm rolling. So, and I got his back. So every day I try to, you know, keep him motivated like he motivate me, just keep us you know, just keep being positive yeah. about things and mm -hmm. just 
definitely always we keep God first and I even give him a scripture or something when I can see he's feeling low. Mm -hmm. So I try to build him up because I know that he wants to do the right thing about his family. Mm -hmm. He wants to be the protector, the provider, everything. So I always try to keep him uplifted as much as I can. I want, I want to tell you guys, ladies, something. Mm -hmm. You women out there, I want, to, I want to tell you guys something. The most important thing that you can do is learn how to speak life into your man. Brothers, let's talk about that really quickly. We don't have much time, but man, let's be honest. The most important thing that they can do for us is speak life to us. Because that one conversation can change everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of the story of David and Abigail in 1 Samuel 25. And I don't have time to talk about that, but if I did, Lord God Almighty, I can preach this thing, man. David was about to go slam off and kill everything in the house of Nabal, the fool. And Abigail had a conversation to change the course of that man's life. Every woman out there, I want to encourage you, when you get a chance, open up your Bible and read 1 Samuel 25. Abigail was beautiful, but the Bible did not focus on her beauty. It focused on her ability to speak life to a man who was willing to die. Jesus Christ, have mercy. Boy, now, what is the most important thing for a woman? We, we, need, we, need, we need words, but what is the most, speak for the women here before we get off this air soon, because we don't have too much time. Uh, I can't speak for all women, but I think the most important thing for me is security. And when I say security, I don't mean financially. I just mean, I just, I mean in all aspects. You know, I need my husband to be my provider, as Terry said. I need him to be there for me emotionally. I need to know I can trust him. Everything that makes me feel secure with not uh, ever doubting anything that he's doing. You know, like Naya said, you know, not having to check in. All of that stuff makes me feel secure. Yeah. You know, so that's important to me. Because once I have <clears throat> that security, then, you know, that, I mean, that's number one for me. Security. You know, I can't speak for all women, but I do know for me that's, yeah, that's I, the I believe, top I believe, priority. I, be, I believe women want security. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe women want security. I, I was actually thinking the same thing. Um, security, and one thing that we struggled with or that I struggled with was that word submission. Mm -hmm. But once I felt secure... Right. The submission followed. Um, and for me, the submission is just simply, which then affirms him, but is simply, you know, asking what his thoughts are before I make a decision or um, just having a conversation about things that we can agree on together. So absolutely for me, number one is security. But then with that, the submission follows and then affirm that submission affirms him. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, for, for a woman, for a woman, security is important because in the Garden of Eden, her security was taken. Adam did not guard and protect. So when a woman don't see that right there, they become real angry and aggressive. And guys, listen, guys, security does not mean money because you can have a lot of money and that woman not feel secure. I say it this way. A woman will leave a multimillionaire for a regular working man any day of the week if she feels good in his presence. A woman wants to know, men, that you got her back, front, and sides. And your mama ain't in the way. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole show. Your grandmama, your uncle, cousin, niece, nephew ain't in the way. Praise God. Look, we got uh, three minutes left. Three minutes left. I want to pass this over to my brother here. I want you to tell the folks about your ministry, about your church and everything, about the, the event we, we're going to be doing in Yay. March. Go ahead and share that. Give him. Okay, that's it. That's it. And so what he said, we have a movement that God has allowed us to start several years ago. It's called Infallible Destiny. Uh, we've now we're doing our fourth annual relationship summit for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're in a relationship or not, singles, dating, engaged, married. We'll be doing that in Virginia Beach this year, so we're excited about that. Go to infallibledestiny.com to actually find out how do you spell it? How do you spell it? I N F A L L I B L E D E S T I N 
Y.com. You see that? Yeah, yeah. And so you can get more information. Katrina and my man Enrique are going to be closing it out this year. We're so excited about it. But you can do that. And if you're local, yes, if you're local here in Richmond, uh, uh, God has allowed us to start a church a few years back and yes. called Destin Word Calvary Revival Church. We worship out of Bowtie Cinema every Sunday at 10 a.m. in Theater 2. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. This was a, an extremely blessed show. Yeah. And it, 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 you know what? It feels like we can actually do a part two to this because yeah. yeah. there's so much more we can cover. And I, I, th I think that I'm going to talk to the 4D crew and see what they're thinking. But I feel as if we could have did so much more. Yes. And I don't think an hour could really cover all that we could share. There's so much more we can share. So we may be doing a part two, and, you know, this, this season right here. Um, uh, so also what I want to say is this. Um, God is good. And if God is the center of your marriage, then your marriage or your relationship will not fail. If it does fail, it's because you are missing the manufacturer and the whole thing that he produces is called marriage. Yeah. So when you take the manufacturer out of the product, there's a defect. Lord, I can, oh, God, let me stop before I, I know. Don't let, don't let me start again. We're going to do part two. I, stop it, stop it, and stop it. Now, listen to what I want to tell you guys. We are going to do a part two. I don't know when, but we're going to do a part two. All right. With that being said, there's a couple of things I want to leave you guys with. First and foremost, I want to thank our guests for being here, for being awesome. I want to thank my wife for being my, my you know, my corner, man. You, you got my back, for sure, for sure. And I, I'm so grateful that you helped me to be the man who I am today. I've grown because of you, and I am growing continuously because of you. You have taught me so much, and I've learned so much how to be a man from a woman, which is amazing to even say that. So I thank, I thank you for that. I thank God for this platform. I really believe this is going to the nations with your help. That's why I need you to press share right now. <laughs> Keep sharing this video. Also, we created a new website. You guys got to check it out. It's EnriquePascal.com. You got to check it out. You go to that website and find out everything about this show and everything we're doing on that website. The other thing is uh, every Thursday, every Thursday, I am doing uh, consultations on relationships. Okay, the phone number to call is 855, number four, the word is, is advice, 855-4-ADVICE. If you call that number on Thursdays, I'm going to help you out with your relationship. I promise you, because the Holy Spirit knows how to fix anything that is broken. Yes. It is not me who's speaking, it's the Holy Ghost. Yes. All right. With that being said, next week, I am going to be solo. I'm going to go slam off. <laughs> I am doing this thing called the Genesis Experience next week. Oh, God. God is the creator of the marriage, of the relationship. But he gave us a blueprint on how to succeed successfully in a marriage. And I'm going to give you revelation wisdom next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't want to miss that. If you are married, single, divorced, whatever, you're going to need to know these principles and apply it in order for you to succeed in your relationship. With that being said, thank you so much for tuning into the show. Thank you so much for supporting. We are taking this thing across the globe, y'all, in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys, man. Keep the family together. Yeah. See you guys next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless you. God bless you.